Ericsson was founded by a young Swedish engineer in 1876, Lars Magnus Ericsson, who believed that communication was a basic human need and should be available for all. And of course, by all, we mean both men and women and uh, really reaching all corners of the globe. Our company purpose is empowering an intelligent, sustainable, and connected world. And I think that that is really going to be fundamental to bridging the digital gender divide. My name is Heather Johnson. I'm head of sustainability and corporate responsibility at Ericsson. And I'm delighted to be here at the Women in Tech program to share some thinking and uh, some of the work that we've been doing for over a decade in order to help to bridge the digital gender divide. Delivering sustainable value, it can sound a bit like a, um, you know, a, a cliche, but I truly believe that it is going to be the intersection of good business and social impact that is going to create this um, future where we can, as a, an important part of the global ecosystem, uh, deliver value. It is going to be to companies as well as the communities where we, uh, where we work, as well as engaging the employees um, that are part of the ecosystem. So I thought I would just to set the frame uh, and so that you understand how we're working with sustainability um, at Ericsson, really start us off by just painting a bit of a picture and setting the frame. Um, what we start with always is a foundation of responsible business. This, this lays the, the way that we work, the way that we um, you know, partner and, uh, and really um, embrace the responsibilities that we have, whether they're in our supply chain, whether they're to our customers, or whether with a broader societal stakeholders. Um, our two pillars of positive impact are environmental sustainability, and digital inclusion. So for of course, for today's, uh, for today's session, I'm going to really zero in on the digital inclusion and talk to you about some of the work that we have been doing. But also to set the frame, I think it's important to understand really, especially I think companies as they go forward, um, and something that Ericsson has been doing for decades as a sustainability pioneer, is thinking about the impacts that you have throughout your, uh, not only value chain, but into society. So we use this, uh, this image of the three concentric circles. In the middle, you have Ericsson as an enterprise, really how uh, we work as a company, our carbon footprint, really how we run our operations. The, the second uh, circle is about our portfolio, but also the supply chain, really thinking through that industry value chain, um, how what we do, how we develop our products, how we, um, how we set targets and programs with our supply chain, how all of that can make an impact. And the third circle, and also where we'll put a lot of focus today, is on the societal impact. What can we enable? How can we contribute? And what can we empower? When the global goals were uh, launched in 2015, uh, it wasn't really obvious to the private sector um, what their role was to play. And Ericsson, I'm very proud to say, was one of the few pioneers that really stepped forward and understood that um, in order to really play a, a key role, we had to be front and center, not only for our industry and really driving the, the thinking around the use of technology, helping to underpin every one of the 17 goals and their achievement but also really the role of the private sector. Um, and I think that this is something, you know, I hope that the people watching will really think about, I mean, we're now four, more than five years on, I think it has become a much more mainstream idea to talk about what the role of companies are and that they are part of an ecosystem 
And I truly believe it is an ecosystem. So at Ericsson, we have, of course, been doing a lot of thinking since 2015. And, um, and where we believe we make the most impact is by really using the core technology that we deliver. We are an innovation company and uh, have been innovating what communication technology is since 1876, uh, but also twinning that with partnership. And I think that isn't something to be underestimated. I truly believe and love to quote um, the former uh, Deputy Secretary General of the UN, Jan Eliasson, uh, who said that partnership is the new leadership. So I think that it is really important to understand the not only the partners that can help you to, to reach your goals, but really to deliver um, this, I think, approach of an ecosystem thinking and driving ecosystems, meeting like-minded partners, and twinning that technology partnership to amplify positive impact at scale. So what do we mean and, and how do we work with digital inclusion? I think it's, you know, maybe helpful to break this down into our uh, three uh, key pillars. Of course, we start with the portfolio. Ericsson has been connecting people since 1876, and mobile broadband technology is one of the um, most ubiquitous uh, known in human history. So of course, that is at our core, and that is what we want to do. We want to ensure that the, the benefits of digital technology and digital society are really available and realized by all. So our technology laying that backbone for uh, not only, um, you know, this communications uh, um, technology, but also truly a backbone of sustainable development in society. Um, but I don't think that that is enough. Just the products we deliver wouldn't in and of themselves be enough. It's also about our advocacy efforts. We have been a partner in countries, we have been local in countries for over a century uh, around the world. We're active in 180 markets today. And so, of course, we are a part of the communities and the societies where, where we are. So we've understood some of the challenges. What are the roadblocks that are hampering digital inclusion and for all to enjoy these benefits? So, of course, advocating for accessibility and affordability, and not least digital literacy. And I'll come back to that because it is a really fundamental element. Um, and the final pillar, and here again, where I'll put a bit more focus now as we go forward in the presentation, is on our programmatic efforts. So these are two programs that we have. Ericsson Response is our global humanitarian response program. It has been active for over 20 years. We celebrated that milestone last year, and it's an amazing volunteer program that, um, where we go on secondment with the UN in times of disaster. And that we could take um, a whole session uh, to talk about that. But I'll move to Connect to Learn which is our global education program. And here again, last year was a great milestone of 10 years of um, our uh, experience and working with the uh, partners in over 25 countries to really help enable access to education for all. But maybe just to step back to think through what is really the connection with education and digital inclusion. Um, and I would say you can really, if you, you're looking at the, um, if you're looking at this uh, timeline here, this roadmap here, it is really about connectivity being, of course, at the core. Because think about it, that is what opens a, uh, a real 
um, I guess, global library, global resources available when a school is connected. Um, but it's also, of course, about the devices all the way through to really all of the empowering um, opportunities that become available with this, uh, with this inclusion. So, you know, I just reflect a bit about an experience I had in a very rural, remote part of northern Uganda, where, uh, you know, for the first time, a, a community uh, school was um, was connected, and to really, it's pretty much of a privilege to have been able to experience seeing students. Um, you know, experiencing this connection to a world so far outside of their, uh, the community that, uh, that they're in. And um, it's, uh, it, it's really a powerful uh, experience and, and one that's, of course, amazing to be able to share. But to just maybe spend some time then on uh, Connect to Learn. So I really love the, uh, the, the name itself because, in fact, Connect focusing on that school connectivity and to learn. The empowering effects of that connectivity is really something where we start to see how we can really bridge and um, uh, work on the gender divide. Um, I'm very excited about one of the more recent partnerships that we have uh, that we have embarked on together with UNICEF that is it's called the Giga project and this initiative has the ambition by 2030 to connect every school to the internet imagine that it is just a phenomenal ambitious audacious goal but at the same time it's one that is very achievable and uh, so we are working with UNICEF first starting to map the gap to understand what is the situation country by country. And we expect within the next three years that we'll be able to map that, that gap in the first wave of 35 countries. Um, and so really catalyzing that school connectivity is of course a fundamental. But then, of course, you have the to learn side. And here we've been partnering with UNESCO, another uh, fantastic UN partner, as well as a number of other uh, academic and, and like-minded partners to really drive the, um, the use of uh, the technology and driving also the curriculum around digital literacy. Because, of course, the connectivity alone, you know, it's, it's about how it is used, how we are able to, to drive this, um, this combination. Technology alone is not a panacea. It is about how that technology, innovation, and, uh, and connectivity is applied for uh, the benefit of, um, of all. So I think here, really to, to dial in on some of the amazing challenges there are, of course, what we're seeing is this gender gap in STEM subjects. And what we want to really try to improve is the, I mean, gender equality more broadly being catalyzed by this opportunity to, to empower girls in STEM education. And this is, of course, something that is very much at the heart of Ericsson's both ethos, but also some very strong uh, employee engagement around this effort. Um, but the, the challenge is daunting and quite, uh, quite um, you know, Vast, And I would also just emphasize that it is a global challenge. Um, whether you're in a developing country or a developed market, we are seeing this, um, this gender divide, um, you know, really something that is, needs to be addressed at all levels. And again, thinking about those advocacy efforts, whether they're global at a UN level or whether they are looking at country or even community level opportunities. 
So maybe to make this a bit practical, I'll share a couple of the examples of things that Ericsson has been doing over these last 10 plus years. I'm very um, proud of the work that we have done in Myanmar. connect to learn entered that country um, a few years ago, and uh, we were able to connect schools in over 30, uh, 30 parts of the, uh, of the country. And this was done together with the UK, DFID, the, the development agency of the UK, um, as well as, um, as our mobile operator customers. And again, it was a privilege, I mean, just to paint a picture of the community and the, the schools that we were able to, to visit and not only the students, but also the teachers being able to use technology to be able to teach more effectively. And they were actually training with virtual reality tools. I mean, it was really this incredible leapfrog of opportunities. And again, thinking about that gender digital divide, most of the teachers were women. And so this was such an empowering opportunity for them to, uh, to take part of. There is also, I talked about the employee engagement uh, at Ericsson and mentoring uh, girls and students uh, across the globe has been an important aspect of our Connect to Learn uh, initiative. We are working, you know, across um, not only in um, in developing countries, but these programs are equally relevant across Europe and the U.S. In fact, in the U.S., uh, Ericsson has been a strong partner of the Girl Scouts. And this one I'll take a moment on to talk about because it's a wonderful ecosystem of bringing in that connectivity that I talked about, but also um, thinking about uh, the Girl Scouts. They, um, in the Dallas area, created a, um, a, a STEM center of excellence. So girls were getting their badges on STEM subjects, and they were being mentored by Ericsson uh, volunteers, and even being able to come and visit Ericsson to see what would a, what would a job in the future hold, um, you know, by really learning these subjects and, and understanding these concepts. So again, bringing together the connectivity, also the empowering effect, and, um, and, and really delivering that as some sustainable value that we think will have a ripple effect in, uh, into the future. And not to mention, or not to forget, of course, that we are also thinking about our talent pool of the future. Of course, we want to see uh, more and more women entering not only the STEM education tracks, but also entering the workforce in jobs that have a STEM base. And I think this is, uh, you know, this is sort of taking the long view, but we really, uh, we really think that we can start to help to make these systemic changes. We hope that these, uh, these girls will, you know, be interested in Ericsson, but even if we're sort of broadening the, the, the pool for, for STEM talent, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite important. And um, so similarly, the, the engineering lab that, that we had was, was taking, this, uh, taking this approach. Um, so I wanted to, I mean, I painted this macro picture first about the big challenges that there are, and then broken it down to thinking about how technology and partnership can really help to set a platform. I've talked to you about some of the subjects or the, some of the programs that we've been implementing, and that's just a handful. As I said, we're benefiting over 200,000 students in over 25 countries, and that's growing. Um, the GIGA initiative that, um, that we entered is something that actually no one company could ever manage themselves. So it is that partnership that will truly help to, uh, to, to deliver that value. But I also wanted to bring it down to the personal level. So really thinking about the impact, you know, these are big ideas, these are big challenges, but then to, to also bring it down to really how this is affecting girls, how this bridging of the divide is, um, is impacting individual lives. 
And so if you see the, the girl in the middle of the picture, Ramatu, she was one of our first, um, first students in a Connect to Learn school. And just to paint a picture about that school, this was back in the mid 2000s in the Millennium Villages Project in Sub-Saharan Africa, really the epicenter of poverty. And at the time, Ericsson was looking at how how technology that we deliver could be an intervention for development, and that, of course, we immediately saw that education was one of those interventions. And what was wonderful to see, and I think something about having a long-standing commitment, was that we were able to follow these girls year on year. So we first connected the school, then we... Um, we're able to work with the teachers, the training, the curriculum, and follow through the three years to graduation of this high school. What was interesting to see at the beginning of this uh, exercise was when we took uh, some video testimonials from the girls. They were keeping very traditional um, job roles, if you will. And Ramatu became a community health worker, which um, you know she was so proud and delighted that she could play that role, really giving back to her community. But I think you know equally what was so empowering was to hear that after three years, many of the girls also could expand beyond their traditional thinking about a traditionally traditional gender role and. They wanted to be judges, lawyers, uh, even the president. Um, and I think that that is, again, it's, it's maybe a cliche, but opening the world to these girls to be able to see outside of the communities where they may find themselves that, um, that, that this, this program and this initiative and digital inclusion really can be this bridge. And then one of our uh, later programs was in India. And of course, this is also an area where there is a huge need. And uh, of course, education is going to be a uh, huge part of the, um, of the solution there. And so in 2015, uh, we worked with um, the Learning Center in India. And I think what's interesting here too, again, a similar parallel to the Millennium Villages example, is that by being exposed to the skills and the training and the sort of empowering uh, experience, then that catalyzed um, students to be able to go on to really, you know, perhaps beyond what they had expected to uh, to achieve in their lives. So I will just conclude to say I think that um, I hope that this has been an inspiring um, an inspiring example of how a company can be a part of the solution to a global challenge how twinning partnership and technology is uh, really going to be I think an essential component of um, of meet meeting any global challenge and that um, we are, in fact, very, um, uh, we're very um, committed to the, um, you know, the empowering effect of the technology that we deliver. So I'll conclude and say that, you know, reflecting back on our founder's vision about enabling uh, communication for all is, you know, something I think that's quite a testament to the company commitment, to be able to, to really drive the programs and the, uh, the portfolio and the advocacy efforts um, for, a, uh, for the long term is, I think, the right approach to, uh, to take. And I, I hope these have been some inspiring examples for you to, to carry forward with you and um, I am very pleased that I have been able to share those with you today. Thank you so much.